<laughs> What's that? Good, it's great. And I was like, huh? Hey. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. At my age, every day is great when you get up. What's the plan for to try to replace Eric and all he was doing for you on the defensive side? Well, the guy's just going to have to step up. You got, uh, you know, Hawk will step up. I mean, he was rotating a lot in there anyhow. Duran's been going almost the whole time. Uh, we got Sean Williams now. It's going to have to step up. We put him in, you know, even us up a little bit last week. Uh, but he's been a guy that's, uh, you know, I feel like is a very capable guy. Um, so, some of the, those guys just got to step up and replace him, you know, and and uh, keep it going. And uh, Coach uh, uh, cited the call on the, the the Michael Walker interception that he, you know, popped into the to the pass lanes and gave. Him for that. Um, how do you feel when I, you know, when you get one that works like that? Oh, you always, every time you you run some kind of something new that you put in, you know, you're hoping that, uh, you know, the guys do a good job with it and they did a great job with it. I mean, it, it's, I draw it up, but they're the ones that got to execute it. You know, there's a lot of things we've drawn up and you don't know it, but they didn't, ex you know, it didn't happen. And so, this one, that's, it's always the players that are going to make the play. It's not going to be me. So it's easier to draw the scheme up than it is to actually do the scheme. So my, my job was easy. Theirs was the hard one, and they executed it. And uh, what are some of the issues San Francisco um, present? I know he wants to run that, run that ball and then bootleg off of it, and he's got Kiddo and Samuel. And that's it. You just, you just named it all. I mean, you just, you know, I don't even need to answer. You just answered it. It's just... They're, they're a very good offensive football team that can really run the ball well. They got really talented players, whether it be Kittle, whether it be um, Samuel back or you know, um, 19 back there, or what, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're, they run the ball well. They got Mack, the offensive center that was here. I mean, the guy's been a all pro guy for years and years. They got a good offensive line. They got a great scheme. Uh, they do a lot of stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's not an easy offense to defend. And it's not only just because of the formations and all the stuff they do, it's, and it's also the talent. It's just a it's really good scheme that fits their talent very well. I mean, Kyle's done a great job, but he's always done a great job every place that he's been. I have a, really a lot of respect, a lot of respect for him. Well, he's a safety, but the thing of it is, is we've been in nickel so much. I, he's still a safety. So, I mean, he's still got the role as a safety in there. It's just that he has kind of taken over that nickel spot. And when, you know, when you're out here in practice, you only get so many reps and so many of them are base and so many of them are maybe some kind of penny or nickel sub, you know, sub package. And so it's kind of hard to get him in and play a lot of safety and get a lot of reps at safety when you're trying to give him a lot of reps at nickel. So. He is still a safety, but he's really primarily the nickel first. And is, is that not, is that something you feel? Would that change maybe based off of opponent and off of scheme? Like depends on how much. Slot, like there's a smaller slot, maybe you'd use Darren or Adrian more, and then mm. I'm just wondering. It's not. Yeah, sure. It's about the opponent, but it's also about what we're going to do. Whether we're going to play a lot of man, we're going to play a lot of zone, we're going to blitz a lot, we're going to pressure a lot. It's all those things are a factor. Also, the team that you're playing, what personnel are they going to be in? Is it going to be a bigger personnel? Or is it going to be a smaller personnel? I mean, there's so many factors depend on who's going to be the nickel and where guys are actually going to play. Uh, well, the thing of it is not not really because if you, uh, I know you guys aren't necessarily out there. I don't think when we run our team stuff, yeah. but we don't. It's not like the one offense is going against the one defense a whole lot. So Cordero, I haven't seen CP over there on the scout team offense very <laughs> often, and our guys, you know, we're running against guys that are going off cards. So that it. If we're doing something maybe against the offense, yeah, but we do so little of that during the week when the season starts that I don't know that that really 
is really a big factor. I mean, and, and they use him, you know, they, they use him similar, but not the same. So it's, you know, it's, it's it might help slight, but it's it would be slight. Um, prob not not really the physical part of it, but uh, it's probably be, been easier for him in certain situations, I would say, um, to understand the scheme of the defense, especially in the passing game, having played safety as opposed to being a linebacker all your life. Um, guys that are in the back end kind of have to know what's going on in front of them. Because you, you sometimes got to know where you got to fit in the run game. Um, there's a lot of things you got to know the, all the formations, where everybody is, what their splits are, all that kind of stuff. Well, when you're a linebacker, that stuff is all very valuable too. You know, I know if the guy's split's not very wide, maybe what he might be running is it going to really affect my drop as a linebacker. And I also kind of know what the front guys are doing. It's very seldom do the defensive line really care what the secondary is doing the other way around. But the guys in the back end have to know what the linebackers are doing and sometimes the, the D line's doing. So it certainly helps him from that standpoint just in the overall scheme of defense, probably understanding defense, especially in the passing game. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, and then from, from his standpoint of kind of, uh, I guess, being the vocal leader of, of this defense and getting everybody lined up, I know I've asked you about this before, but it's kind of been a while. I mean, kind of coming in and giving him that responsibility, how do you think he's kind of worked himself into, I guess, a vocal leader of this defense? Oh, I think he's really grown in that aspect. You know, I think, I think what he, you know, what a lot of guys have, and I think what Foye has, which is a good uh, attribute, is probably I would guess, and he would have to answer it, but I'm just saying I think from a, just being around players uh, for so long, a lot of times young guys like that kind of give up the role of being a leader to the guys that have kind of always assumed that leadership role, such as Grady, such as Dion. You know, guys, those guys that are always kind of have been there and are always everybody's looked at day one as kind of your leaders, and those two guys happen to be captains. But I think what happens, so sometimes you're a little bit reluctant to be real vocal and like I'm not trying to take over your leadership job. But I think he has now learned that that is part of his job and, and it doesn't take anything away from those guys. Richie Grant is kind of a similar situation. He kind of felt like I've kind of got to give way to Duran and Eric because those guys are older guys that have established and all that stuff. So as a rookie, I got to know my place and just stay down you know, here and kind of let them take charge. And we, I've told him early on, that's not why we drafted you. We drafted you because of Central Florida, you were a take charge guy. We need that. But I think the, the, the reluctance is always to give way to those veteran guys, you know, and I've seen it every place I've ever been. When you went into New England and you got Brewski and Rabel sitting there, you know, guys didn't want to all of a sudden get out there and start telling everybody what to do because here's Brewski and Rabel, they've been doing it, or Ray Lewis at, at Baltimore, or just uh, Wesley Woodyard at, at Tennessee. There's always those guys that are kind of established, and young guys have a reluctance to do that. But I think in your case, what you've asked me is Foyer has kind of learned that that's not taking anything away from Dion. It's not taking anything away from Jarrett. So it's just... He has gotten better and better and better at assuming that role. Well, just the whole the whole concept of coverage. Um, the most uh, the first thing is our nickel controls kind of everything. He doesn't necessarily always have to make the calls, but his alignment dictates everything to us. So he's have to, had to learn 
Okay, and I get this formation, here's where I gotta be, and I gotta make a call and let everybody know where the nickel's right or left or what it is, because that sets up everything that we do. And do I motion with the guy? Do I not motion with the guy? If I run a pressure, what am I communicating to the front, to the linebacker? What am I? All that stuff he's had to learn to communicate a lot, and that's what our safeties have to do. So being a nickel and being a safety is kind of all the same thing. They, they have got to be great communicators. So it's, I've had a hundred, you know, every place I've been, I've had a safety that played nickel. You know, every place. And nickels, when they would eventually move back to safety. You know, maybe when they started losing a little bit of their speed, they'd go back to a safety instead of playing nickel. But they, they're interchangeable. All, all three of them are, all, the two safeties and the nickel are all interchangeable. Yeah, he didn't have to do all that stuff. At, at, I mean, he laughs at me all. He laughs all the time when I say something, because I would make reference to Central Florida or something like that. We didn't, we didn't do too much of that back then, <laughs> and so it's just you know he's got to, yeah. It, it's but that's the the more that's like we've talked about so many times in the past is it's just not going to happen overnight, you know. But the more they do it, then the more comfortable they become with it, the easier it becomes for them. But you got to keep doing it and doing it, and you're sometimes going to go through some bad pains, you know, getting it done. But if you keep switching all the time, you're never ever going to get better at it and learn it. You know, if you just keep going, well, all right, I'm going to make it easy for them, and I'll just do this. Well, but then they're never going to learn to do the stuff that you really want them to do. Then you're starting all over next year trying to teach them the new stuff. You just got to do it, and. You know, I mean, we're not crazy. We're not. If we go through something for the week and it doesn't look good all week, we, we're not going to run it in the game. But the point of it is, you got to try it to see if they can do it. If you don't ever try it, how do you know if they can ever do it? So, uh, it, those guys are just starting to feel more comfortable doing stuff. And then when you tweak it, it's not like his wholesale. Like, there's not this panic attack. Like, oh man, this is different. It, it's probably got some similarities, so they kind of can fall into it. So. You know, we're doing more and more all the time. Can you talk to guys more this week about where their eyes are, just given the nature of the offense and all that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is, a, this is a physical football team that we're playing that does a lot of stuff in the run game and a lot of moving parts. I mean, they are all over the place. Somebody's moving darn near every play. And it's not always the same guy. It's not like, okay, well, that's the guy that's the motion guy. No. They motion 44, they motion 15, they motion 81, they motion 85, they motion them all. So, you know, it's not something, and I mean, they do it for, on, for a reason. So you just, uh, you got to lock in at your position, you got to play really good technique, and you really got to play disciplined football. We can't be running around and doing our own thing, or it's going it, to it get ugly. As you watch film with Kyle's offenses, does he sort of, does he tend to find violators and keep on hammering them? If he finds a guy who he can move, Place. On who now? Kyle Shanahan. Kyle. I think he'll do he, he'll do that, but I think more than that, he'll figure out the scheme that you're playing and figure out how to go attack the scheme. Yeah. He's going to figure out a way that I can get a guy having a good angle on this guy, and then they, if they're going to bump the front, then uh, am I going to do this? And he just he's I've always had a lot of respect for him. He does a great job on offense of figuring that stuff out. I'm sure it's always – everybody always has – every offensive coordinator feels like if they got a guy they can pick on either running the ball or throwing the ball on, that's always going to be the case. But I think what Kyle does a great job of is figuring out your defensive scheme, your coverage, how you're playing things, and then attacking that. I think that's what he does a great job of. Oh, you never get get in all of it. I I don't know. Maybe in the playbook, when you get all said and done at the end of the year, you might have sixty percent in, six, seventy percent maybe of all your book in. Because some some of the stuff just ne is not pertinent. Maybe to the team, you never play a team that this was good against 
three years ago, but it's not good now. But it's still in the book. I mean, it's still part of it. But I don't know. It, it's each week we're, we're, we add a little bit more and more. And I wouldn't say, you know, we're still a long ways, but it doesn't really matter how much we get in. What really just matters is, is what we're doing effective. That, that's all. It, it doesn't really matter whether I get 70% in or 50% in or whatever. It's just, are the guys feeling more comfortable doing what we're doing without adding stuff and then making them uncomfortable? Because if it gets to that point, then we did too much. So it's just a matter of, can they handle it? And can they play well doing what we want them to do? Do you feel like you're able to add, I mean, you kind of hinted at it a little bit, do you feel like you're able to add more week over week in all? Yeah, we do. We add a little something. Not much, but maybe we'll add something. And some weeks might not add anything because it may, it's not really going to be something that's really going to help us. You've you got to look at everything and say, you know, why do you want to put something in? And sometimes more is not better. And sometimes less is better. Sometimes you take stuff out. So it's just every every week is such a, different week every every week i mean this offense is so different than, than than last week and so it's just it's different quarterbacks different everything's different so every week's that way when we played tom a couple weeks ago it was a lot different than this one and so it's just you know every week is a different week you guys good appreciate it thank you yeah.